Hey everyone, today we're going to see if we can do a simple data migration from this iPod Touch 4th generation to this iPod Touch 4th generation. Now you might be wondering, well, why'd you want to do that? You know, they're the same, right? Um, well, there is a reason. This is my um, original iPod Touch 4th generation from, I believe, 2011 or earlier. And the touchscreen no longer works correctly. I have a bunch of... Uh, old games on here that I like to play, but as you can see, the touchscreen doesn't work right, so I can't play them anymore. You, know, you can tell there that it just opened up settings even though I was trying to swipe in this direction. So clearly, this, so clearly this is not a usable device anymore, but originally I wanted to take it to like a device repair center that would just replace the touchscreen. I've already had the touchscreen replaced like once before, it used to be black. But essentially, I can't use this anymore. So what I want to do is I want to take all the data from this and put it onto that. This one. This is a, six, a 16 gigabyte iPod Touch 4th generation that I got off of like eBay or something. And it, it is exactly the same as these two, except there's nothing on it. Uh, it's running iOS 6.1.6. .6. Now that might be a problem because this run this one is running iOS 5.1.5. .5. Um, I originally didn't upgrade um, this one to iOS 6 because I didn't really like the way that iOS 6 kind of solidified everything. Um, oh, iOS starting after iOS 6 started to kind of um, solidify everything and kind of make it one solid tone. Um, which I didn't really like, and, well, it's been kind of the trend for the past several iOS releases, all the way up to, I believe we're on iOS 15 now. Um, and so I kept it on iOS um, 5, and also in part because I literally do not have enough space to upgrade that to an OS that's newer. Now, I actually did try to do a data transfer through iTunes before, and it didn't work because this is running a newer OS than this one is. And for some reason, iOS cannot transfer data from an older to, uh, from an older OS to a newer OS. So if I want to actually get anything done, I would have to downgrade this back to iOS 5.1.5. This is a uh, five gig, uh, 16 gigabyte, sorry, a 16 gigabyte model. This is a five gigabyte model, which is the, which was the cheapest one you could buy back then. Um, but you know, five gigabytes is barely enough space to do anything, but um, it was it was enough for everything, all of the games I ever wanted to play, except I had no space to um, upgrade the OS or really take too many pictures and video. So that is the main obstacle that we're gonna have to overcome. One thing that we can try is I have an original iPad, um, an original iPad running iOS um, 5.1.5 or I think it's iOS 5.1.5. Oh, it's 5.1.1. Nonetheless, it's the same OS that my iPod is running. So I got this iPad a, a couple months ago. Um, I believe it's from 2011 or 2012. It's about as old as this. Um, but I think, and I think it was similarly equipped to the um, iPhone 4 um, at the time. I think it had the same amount of RAM it had the same amount of RAM, same processor, everything uh, like the iPhone 4 did. Except this did not get upgraded past iOS 5.1.1. And I think the iPhone 4 made it to... Um... There are some like jailbreaking hacks that you can do, use to get some apps working. But in my experimentation with it, I haven't been able to get much working beyond this like clock app. Which I think it's pretty cool, but... Unfortunately, that's all it can really do now. Um, aside from, you know, you can put iBooks on here or you, and you can also um, sync it with iTunes and put some books on there or PDF documents or what have you. So it works pretty good as an e-reader, but beyond that, it's kind of obsolete. Actually, very obsolete, I should say that. But the point is, these two are running the same OS. So if I can get some games or any sort of data to transfer from this device to this device, then that should be a good sign, and then that means I could go over and try to do it to this device. So we're gonna be using something called 3U Tools to get all this done. Now, 3U Tools is basically all things essential for your iDevices. 
Um, it has a lot more tools than iTunes does, although it still uses iTunes drivers and such. So if you go into the toolbox, uh, you have all sorts of stuff here. Like you have, um, well, nothing's connected right now. So all of these are grayed out, but you have backup and restore, erase all data, update uh, IPCC file, accessibility, delete invalid icons. Um, you can even jailbreak from this somewhere. Um, you can make ringtones. Uh, you can even um, stream. You can even stream your device directly to your computer if you have a supported device, um, which is really nice. So essentially, this is this is going to be the way that we do most of this video. Now, to do this, you need to have both devices connected to the computer at the same time. And I'm using Windows 7 because apparently it has better compatibility. This cable here inspires confidence. To be fair, this duct tape is held together for I don't even know how many years, so... Alright, looks like it is connected. Now I gotta connect the original iPod. I don't have iTunes installed, but I do have the iDevice driver installed. And it looks like it's working correctly because it says your device is ready to use. Um, oh, now it's installing the driver software for the other iPod. So, let's see, we can... Yeah, this is for the... Uh, this is for my original iPod, so I'm just gonna skip that. Um, this is... Um, yeah, so this is the 16 gigabyte model. And this one is the eight gigabyte model. Oh, it's eight gigabytes, not five. Um, although, like, Apple usually gives you less space than they advertise, so it might actually be five. Um, either way, it's not that much, but this iPod has 16 gigs of space, which is more than enough for all my data. So the first thing I'm gonna start with here is backing up this one. Now, I think there might be a way, actually, no. I'm sorry, the first step I need to do is downgrade the other iPod, the newer one. Um, and I believe you have to do that by flashing the firmware somehow. Firmware. iPod 4 comma 1. So I need to download the correct IPSW for my iPod. Um, there is a proper way to do this. Um, I think this is it. I would have to, I would imagine it is, because it's an iPod 4th generation and it's running iOS 6.1.6. .6. Although, no, that is if you want to restore it to iOS 6.1.6. .6. I want to go down to 5.1.1. This one. And it's downloading. Um, let's see if it works. Sure is taking longer to download than I expected. It's only like 750 megabytes. And it looks like it's done, except it's verifying, and I guess it's done. Okay. So now I need to figure out how to flash the firmware. Um, if not use this tool in a while, let's see here. This classic device support tool is a small tool provided by 3U Tools for some classic Apple devices that were listed before 2013. Okay. Oh yeah, this is what was only supported on Windows 7. Okay. This is, I mean, it's fine. This may not be... Maybe this is it. Okay. Okay. I think... Yes, this is it. All right. I'm, I'm actually going to unplug the... My original iPod so I don't delete anything on it. Classic device support. Yep, iPod Touch 4th is right there. Let's import the firmware to from wherever it downloaded it. I actually don't know where it would have put it. Uh, files. Oh, man, man, I gotta download this again. Because I, I do not know where it put the firmware one. This is bad. Okay, I, I don't know where it would have saved this. It's not in the download folder, like, you know, which would be a logic, the logical place for it. Um, can I search by IPSW? Or by file format? Nope. Nothing. Can I delete it from here? Reload. Oh, man. I don't know where it would have saved the file. 
guess there's only a few logical places it can put. Why don't I just search for it? Why am I wasting all this time? Entered. There we go. Crap. Okay, the file does not exist. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I just had to go to this stupid menu. I don't know what I'm doing. What? Where? Where is it stored? Like, you're looking in a folder that doesn't exist. I don't know why I'm wasting so much time trying to find where the file is. Please use a genuine cable. Well, this is as genuine as I'm going to get, so... I don't need to back it all up. I'm just going to flash, see if it works. Oh, crap. Pro Flash. Ah, maybe, I have, this, maybe this is what I have to do. I have to download the SH... It's for version 6.1.6, .6, though. Maybe I have to import firmware first. Download. This is probably not going to work. Okay. All right, I gotta put it in DFU mode. I think there is a way to do it, like from here, enter recovery mode. Yeah, it's just, it's easier to do that and it is working. Um, but it's easier to do that than to go through the whole DFU process. Let's see if it works. Okay, all right, go flash. Go to Pro Flash, got it. Import firmware, there we go. I've already downloaded the SHSH. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's do this. Can't always keep your data while flashing. It's fine. There's nothing on this anyway, so I don't care. Is, uh, is it stuck? It says, please connect USB device to iDevice. Make sure your device is in DFU mode, which it is. I mean, DFU mode and recovery mode are the exact same thing, right? It seems to be stuck on this step. So something tells me it's not in DFU mode properly. Okay, so it looks like putting it in DFU mode by using a button combination did exactly the same thing. Now, maybe I'm just being impatient and I need to wait for it, but I... That does not look good. That does not look right. It looks like it's stuck on the step and it looks like it's not detecting the device in DFU mode, even though it clearly is. I don't know. I'm gonna try something else. Quick flash. Let's do it. Failed to copy pre-flight options during quick recovery mode. Recovery mode and restore. Check your host's file. I mean, with the way files have been kind of running away from me, I may not even find that. System 32. Drivers, etc. Hosts. Open notepad. Add the same code. Where? Oh, at the bottom. Okay, space. Okay, that should work. Save. What, what do you mean I don't have permission? I own you. Change permissions. Allow. Okay, maybe it'll work now. Save. Did it work? Yep, it did. Okay. I'm gonna restart the app for good luck. Oh, my camera battery is about to die. Go flash, iTunes flash. Alright, let's see if it works this time. Oh, it says save and reboot your computer. Oh, it's getting stuck somewhere else. I'm not sure if this is good or bad. But it's searching for the device, which it should be able to detect, otherwise it wouldn't have been able to start. Also, it's showing up right there. Maybe there's just a lot of waiting involved in this process and I'm just really impatient. The thing is, I'm always kind of skeptical of leaving it just on its own like this because I've tried doing something similar and sometimes when I leave it, it just doesn't work. Like it just stays where it is and never goes any further. Maybe I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna restart. 
that might give me the best possible chance for success. And for those of you wondering, yes, I am using the Mac Pro. Windows 7 is installed with boot camp and everything. Well, my camera battery is almost dead and I can't find my dummy battery to run it off of wall power, so I'm just going to record till this thing dies. Um, anyway, I restarted the computer, so it should work now. Okay, let's go into... Is it in DFU mode? No, it is not. Go Flash. Select... No, iTunes Flash would be better. Select local firmware. Go do that. Quick Flash. Flash. Now, if we get stuck on the same thing, I'm just going to let it go. Um, 3194. I literally just fixed that. Did it unsave my edits? I don't understand. Nope, it's still there. So, obviously there's something else wrong. Oh my god, seriously? I can't do this with my phone plugged in. Because it can only support flashing one device at a time. Even if you have two devices plugged in, and you just want to flash one of them. That's incredibly stupid. Um, All right, I'm gonna unplug my phone. I don't need phone audio. Oh, it's still having the problem. Quick flash. Reflash. Let's see if it works, which it looks like it's not. So, as you can probably guess, it didn't work. Now, I don't exactly know what's going on, but I think it has something to do with either the software, the IPSW files, or some drivers not installed correctly. Um, because I tried down flashing an iPhone SE for something different, and it didn't work either. So I don't think the problem is just limited to the uh, iPod fourth generation. Now, it's been a couple days, and one thing that I do have that I didn't have before is iTunes. Now, me not installing iTunes may have caused us to miss out on some very important drivers. Um, and there, there, there was an install iTunes option in 3U tools, but it didn't, uh, I didn't click it. I just clicked install necessary drivers, but that may not have worked. So we're gonna try going the iTunes route um, and see if it works. Now, normally this would restore with an IPSW image that Apple would download from, or that iTunes would download from Apple servers, but there's a way to get around that. You control click restore iPod, or is it alt click? Shift click? There we go. Oh, now I just gotta find where that IPSW file is located. It's in here, oh man, this is the problem I was having before, I remember that now. Um, import, okay. Let's see, I just gotta... Why is it in D? Wait a minute, is C not my hard disk? Oh... Okay, so I didn't explain this earlier. The hard drive that was originally in this Mac Pro that had Windows 10 on it, that one was dying. So I got out Hiren's boot CD and I migrated the OS from the hard, from the hard drive to a one terabyte SSD, which is currently in the machine right now, held in by uh, tape, because I didn't have it, uh, the mounting bracket that I have. Uh, the connector doesn't reach all the way when you put it in there. Um, and so I technically have two boot camp installations. Um, I, when I was going through this, I must have accidentally installed it to drive D instead of C. That makes more sense. That's why I was so confused. iTunes, erase and restore your iPod to 5.1.1 and verify the restore with Apple. Sounds good to me. Could not be restored. Device could not be found. Why could it not be found? Okay. That was weird. All right. Let's try it again. 
All right, let's see if we have any luck this time. An unknown error occurred. I think that says 3194. Huh. Apple says that error 3194 occurs when iTunes can't connect to the Apple software update servers that are used to activate iOS when restoring or upgrading. These servers play a crucial role, so, as, so not being able to connect to them will mean your iPhone cannot complete its restore or upgrade. This, this seems to occur most often when there's something wrong with the iOS software on the device, either the iOS has been modified by jailbreaking, or the version of iOS is expired, no longer supported, or otherwise out of date. This, so if this is true, this throws a wrench into all of my plans. Um, so I'm going to have to do some research later and revisit this, but our plan is not totally dead yet, because we do have an, I, uh, we do have an iOS device that is running iOS 5.1.1 natively. That's the iPad. So why don't we just plug that in, copy all the data over from the original iPhone, or sorry, iPod, and see if that works. I mean, I don't see why either device should object to that. I don't see why iTunes would object to that. I mean, as far as it's concerned, it's just going straight to iOS device to iOS device. I mean, you couldn't have a better match. All right, so 3U Tools does have its own dedicated uh, cloning feature. I've never, I don't think I've actually used it before, um, but let's see if I can do this with an iOS device. Transfer from old iPod to new iPod, no, sorry, iPod to iPad. Uh, yeah, let's transfer, yeah, let's just do everything. The iPad will have, I guess it's, oh, it's not that much data. Well, hold on, actually. Actually, an easier way to do this might be to just look at. So there's, so this thing is, so this, the iPod currently has about 6.22 gigs of 6. Point roughly 4 gigabytes in use. So if it's going to transfer over like a few hundred megabytes of data, it's not all, that's not all of the data. Now, part of this could be due, due to the fact that it's not going to carry over the app save data. Notes will transfer or remove iOS devices. Why will it remove the original devices notes? That makes no sense. That's the exact opposite of a data transfer. Well, not opposite, but it's just not the point. Yeah, so I don't even know what notes I have, but whatever. Okay. Uh, seems to have no objection to that. What is this? Importing the camera roll requires pick tools. No idea what that is, but okay. Oh. Please respectively import photos and videos. Uh, how would I do that? But why would it need pick tools? Couldn't it just drag and drop them? Or is that not how it works? I mean, what is it doing? Like, is it installing pick tools to the iPad? Or is it installing pick tools to 3U tools as an add-on? I mean, the iPad doesn't look like it's doing anything. One thing I will say about the iPad, origin the, the iPad first generation, is that they knew what they were doing. Apple knew what they were doing when they made this device. They knew that it would just be something nice and convenient and something that people would just really like to hold in their hands. It's like they can read everything they could ever want to read. And I unplug the iPad. Why did I think that was a good idea? I was going to unplug the iPad to show you how, like, relatively thin it was. Uh, I broke the focusing thing in my lens. Oh, oh, that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, this is, this is not good. Yeah, that's, uh... It doesn't doesn't get, get any better than that. Okay, well, what with my total chaos going on here, I can still finish recording this video because it can still do like near focus fine. So we need to do this data transfer thing again and hope that I did not corrupt any of the data on my original iPod. So this has been going for like the past hour or something. So I can only assume that it didn't work. Um, Oh, it says succeeded. Okay. Are the images actually there? They're not. Um, is it even transferring any data? It doesn't look like it is. Like it just said it transferred music, but I looked in the music app and it didn't. Oh wait, yeah it did. It's all there.
Then where are my photos? It's about to transfer apps. Okay. Please bind Apple ID to 3U tools before transferring apps. Okay. Actually, I think the apps on here might be under two different Apple IDs. You probably need to enter Apple ID and password when you firstly open the apps that were installed after binding. Understood. What? Failed to transfer some contents. Failed to exceeded to copy 11 apps, failed to deal with 25 apps. That makes 36 in total. So most of the apps didn't transfer. Now, I think I know why. I think it's because it's tied to the other Apple ID that um, is on that phone, not phone, iPod. Um, so I believe I need to bind the rest to the other Apple ID. And it did not transfer the apps. Um, none of the 11 apps that it said that said succeeded to copy. What's weird is that it transferred all my music, but it transferred nothing else. Okay, so obviously something did not work here. Um, yeah, wait, I think those were just some of the apps that didn't transfer over. That's weird. Okay, I don't know what could have caused that. Um, well, actually, yes, I do. Um, it was most likely the fact that the apps that I have are attributed to two Apple IDs, two different Apple IDs. But I think I may have an alternate solution. You could do it the iTunes way. You could do it by just making a backup of this and restore that backup to the iPad. And this actually might be better if it can transfer all the apps that weren't in my iTunes library and bring them over. Okay, looks like it has no objections so far. It's backing up successfully, or it's currently in the process of backing up. It's on step two of four. My camera lens has appeared to have fixed itself. I don't know how. And I adjusted the aperture, but that shouldn't have fixed it all on its own. Maybe it did. I don't know. Uh, so it's been about a day, and um, I don't know if it's possible for this machine to go to sleep. Oh, that explains it. Um, um, so there is a good chance that my backup is not um, did not save. But the problem that I had was that it, I needed to log into the other Apple ID. Now it says that it made a backup, as you can see right there, but I'm pretty sure it did not. So I'm gonna just do this backup thing again. Uh, maybe it'll be smart and only transfer over the stuff that it didn't do yesterday. Probably not though, because I'm asking it to do a full backup. Ah, here's the problem that I was having yesterday. Okay, let's see if that will work. Cannot authorize more than five computers. Okay, after much pain and suffering, I finally got it. Okay, um, I guess it's done. All right, that was quick. Now let's see if I can. You've changed the settings. Okay. All right, now let's see if we can back up. Oh, perfect. I can. Yeah, so let's see if I can back up the iPad to the backup to the iPod backup. Settings from some apps are not compatible with iPad and will not be restored. Okay. Enter the password to unlock your iPad backup. What? When did I set a password for this? Okay. All right, it seemed to like that. Restore in progress. So, looks like everything's going smoothly so far. Famous last words, right? But, um, oh, it's uh, restarting, I guess. So, was it that quick, or did, or did it not transfer over all my apps? Oh, it may not have done that because I honestly don't think it could transfer six gigs of data that quickly or unless it's doing it here off screen somehow. Yeah, it almost feels like this was too easy. There we go. That's 
more accurate. That That's what it usually looks like when it's trying to restore data. All right, so I'm just gonna let it go and see if it works. Okay, so literally the moment I stopped recording, it booted back up, but nothing went over except, with the exception of this one app. Yeah, my music's not even there, so it this didn't even work.